You're going to be watching the light mirror, the voice mirror. Join with me. Voice is a very simple mechanism. It's like putting your shoes on and taking your shoes off. But think of this, if you will. If you will. You forgot that somebody helped you to put your shoes on as you were growing up. I remember somebody helping me to tie my shoelaces and so forth. Don't you? If that's true, you learn how to put your shoes on, you learn how to put your, your pants on, your skirt, your blouse. You learn how to dress, not for color coordination, but how to dress literally. But you forgot that. And as you grow up, you learn to read, to write, and to think. Now, you know that. You spend a lot of time doing that. The vast majority of the time that we are talking throughout the day, we use the speaking voice. We don't write memorandums. We talk. We talk on the telephone. We talk to each other. We talk, we talk, we talk. And talking is the way to go. Now, if your voice isn't talking for you, what do you have? If you're talking like that, what do you have? People listen to you and make a judgment about you. Now, if you're talking up there, all you have to do, are you ready, is energize. Now, watch. If you're talking this way, write. Write one, write two. You're saying... Well, if it's so simple, why doesn't everybody do it? If it were so simple, why didn't anybody find the law of gravity before Newton did in the 18th century? If it's so simple, why did the Wright brothers fly the planes and nobody else before them, basically speaking? Why wasn't mass production of the car produced before Ford? Why, why, why? The answer is that there are innovative people that come along and give us the creative edge and tell us what to do and the rest of us follow. And that's the way it should be. Not too many of us think as pathfinders, as trailblazers, but it's interesting to watch the people who have. Now, if you're talking up there, can you change from a nasal voice to a full voice? Why not? Can it be as simple as I say? Why not? Try it. If you're talking and you're in the living room right now, or in your bedroom and you're with your girlfriend, she has, and she's talking like this, and you don't like that voice, now what you have to do is tell her to say right, and she says right. Say it with energy, Gertrude. Say right. And watch what happens to Gertrude's voice, Fanny's voice, Mildred's voice. Try it. Energize it. Say no. Say no like you mean no. Say no. She's saying, no, 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 no. You ever hear these people talk and the women talk like that? They sound like the Namby Pambies. They sound like the counterpart of Mr. Rogers. Is your mother home? Are you having a good time? You ever hear Mr. Rogers? He sounds like he just doesn't have anything going for him except that light, airy voice. Now, kids like it. I know kids like it. And you grew up possibly in that generation, and you might like it. But there's another way to go. Mr. Rogers doesn't have that voice. That's not his real voice. We have star quality voice. We simply don't use it. That's my premise. Now, why don't we use it? Because we don't have the vaguest idea, not the vaguest, that we have another voice, a real voice. Voices, you know, are for everyone. How do you know? Listen on the telephone and see what it says to you. Hello, Harry, are you home? Are you, uh, are you going to be there? And you hold the telephone away. Oh, uh, yeah, Harry, you're going to tell me what you... And you... What kind of voices are those? Those are the voices of our friends, our associates, our enemies. These are the voices that we tune into day in and out. And we make a judgment about those voices. You do, and I do. And you know you do. But you don't want to tell the other person that you're making the judgment, do you? Because... You might hurt them. What are you going to tell the person who talks like that? Or talks like this? <laughs> what are you going to tell them when you don't understand that the speaking voice is a relatively simple instrument to use, but they don't know how to use it? And that, my friend, includes you. Very few people have a good speaking voice. But nearly everyone, in my opinion, has star quality voice that's beautiful and they don't use it. And the answer is, why? Because they don't take a single lesson on the speaking voice. They don't know they can get a better, more effective voice. Is the question apropos to you? Are voices for everyone? 
or are they only for the stars? Are they only for the people who are in show business? Now, if you believe that, you believe in the tooth fairy. Because when you talk throughout the day, everywhere you talk, your voice is the key to getting you heard, liked, and listened to. It gives credibility, it gives believability, it gives sound ability, it gives all the abilities, and it says who you are or who you aren't. May I ask this of you? Who are you? Does your voice really express you? I'll make you a wager. Your voice is not talking for you. It's talking this way. It's talking that way. It's talking that way. It has all the negative sounds, like a nail on a blackboard, save the voice that really is you. And that voice can give you self-esteem, security, and confidence. Why don't you have it? Because you don't know how to focus your voice in the two-thirds solution. Let me help you. Can I? Remember I told you the voice is built on a megaphone basis from the top of your eyebrow down to the bottom of your vocal fold area? 50% of us talk up there because when you become an adult from a kid, between the ages of 12 and 15, your voice has changed, but you haven't with your voice. You've changed in the clothes you wear, the thoughts you have, the food you like, and almost everything else. Now, when I was a kid, I wore a pair of glasses. I still wear glasses, they're stronger now, but I know I have to wear glasses. We have our eyes measured to us. We have our body palpated by physicians. We have our shoes measured to us, our pants, our skirts, everything else, in respect to who we are. Yet, have you ever had your voice measured to you just once? Just once? And my answer is that you basically have not. And why not? Because you've grown up with the myth and the misconception that the voice that you have is your natural voice. So if you're talking like that, there's nothing you can do about it, right? Right? Wrong. Morty Cooper used to talk up here, right? Right. Was it right? Wrong. The voice is over here. Can you see it on the screen? As you're watching the screen, can you see what the voice is doing? Testing one, two, three. This is more of the voice that I think you have. We all have beautiful voices. We have low-pitched voices for the most part, and we love those voices, but we don't use them. We use them incorrectly. We talk all the way down here. If you watch yes. as the lights are showing you, you talk down here. You want to get the voice up here. Can you see? As I do that, you can see the screen, I think, and you can see the pitch. And it should be up here, and it should not low and rest down here. Now, Henry Kissinger's voice, I feel the situation that we have, is almost inaudible. He can say whatever he wants to say, and we never know what he's actually saying. I feel that this issue. It's, it's always the voice of doom and gloom, and he's not that way. Dr. Ruth has a great deal to say. It might be open sex, clean sex, it could be dirty sex for all we know. It's down here, goes too high, goes betwixt, ooh, ah, mm, up and down. Dr. Ruth is an outstanding person. She has a great deal to tell us, as some of the people that we listen to. But their voices don't give us that edge. What they have is a bunny voice. It makes them recognizable. It makes them aware of who they are. But the sound is a kind of negative. It doesn't really reach out to us. We don't want to listen to those voices too long. We like James Garner. We like Anne Bancroft, Diane Carroll. Those are voices, Cheryl Ladd. Those are voices that are in the two-third solution. Our voices for everybody. Are they for you? Now, if you're going to go back and say, People in show business and public, people go to court, doctors should have good voices. They might say, too, yes, but they worked at it. Did you know a lot of people work at the voice but don't talk about it? It's a closet thing. I know because I work with a lot of people on their voice, and they don't say it in public that they worked on their speaking voice. It's still one of those things that's kind of off the beaten track. Now, why? I don't know. But we feel, in a sense, that the voice is us, and we should have that voice. Should we have the ability to read, write, and think, and just pop out of bed as a kid and be able to do those things? We know that isn't so. You have to learn it. It's not magical. There's nothing magical about what we do in civilization. It's learned over a period of years, and we train each other. Why don't we train the speaking voice? Why don't we have a course in high school or at college or in grade school. So kids, when they grow up to become adults, can have a voice that's listenable 
appealing, relaxing. Do we have to have voices like that? No. Do we have to have voices like that? No. But we do. And you may have those voices. So what I want you to do right now is say, right. Now, you see the light go right, really, one. If I say, I'm Morty Cooper, I'm Morty Cooper, do you see the light going up there? Now I'm going to say, hi, I'm Morty Cooper. You can call me Morty. Everybody else does. I play basketball, they call me, hey, Morty, they're up there. And they want to know what I do for a living. I always give them and tell them I'm gainfully unemployed for the past 30 years. Voice is an invisible field, not only to the public, but to a lot of people as well in my field. So try to understand that your voice, your voice, can express you. It can represent you. It can get you heard, liked, and listened to. And it can do all the things that you want your clothes to do, all the things that your status positions may seek to give you, all the things that money may afford you. Your voice can give you that and more. Because voice is an aspect that you use 80% of the time to speak with throughout the day. It is the code, it is the signal, it is the language. And if your voice doesn't speak for you, what will? Your clothes? Hi, and you look very good. You have a well-dressed suit, you have a fine dress on, you drive a fine car, or you don't have any of those things. And you have a poor way of dressing. Usually I don't wear a jacket or a tie. I like to talk and I like to relate to people. I guess the voice helps me to get heard, liked, and listened to. This voice, I don't think Morty Cooper helped me very much when I went to college. Now, say right. Can you say right? Right. Right one, you see as I'm doing it. Where the vo right one, right two. Now, most of us have lower, fuller, richer voices. But we talk very softly and we talk as though we're shouting so we keep it very soft and we talk this way and people have to strain to hear us. Is that happening to you? It shouldn't. The voice is an instrument and it can get you heard, liked, and listened to, as I said a little while ago. It has credibility and it has believability. I've used the voice mirror, which I use in my office, to show you if you talk all the way up there, it has a certain sound. And people do that. Woody Allen, you know, I might not, I might not. It's very good for Woody Allen because he has a money voice. And uh, it's good for Henry Kissinger because he, he talks like that. He can do the same number throughout the country, year after year, and nobody knows if he's saying anything new. If you talk up here and you say, yes, I'm 007, and you have this voice, women swoon and men love to hear you. We love to hear a voice that's well-focused all these years. I went to you my aunt, Charles Boyer, a romantic lead, made us tune in. Men and women, beasts, kids, and anything else. So isn't the voice worthwhile to focus it up here? If your voice is up here, refocus it, get it this way. The word is refocus. Get your voice over there and make it worthwhile. This is the book, if I may say so. It's called Change Your Voice, Change Your Life. It's a self-help book. You can find it in the library. It tells you how to get a better, more effective voice very quickly. I've tried to get you to think of one thing, the focus and refocus. Don't talk up there. Don't talk down here. I'm Mort Cooper. Or am I Morty Cooper? Or Mort Cooper. I'm right over here. I'll join you next week, same time, same station. Change your voice. Change your life. Yes, I think you can. Don't you? Good night.